All right, welcome back to the shop. This week, we're gonna take a look at this laser engraver and see if this is a really good beginner option if you guys wanna get into lasers. All right, welcome back to the Make or Break shop. I'm Brandon, and here on the channel, we feature tools and projects that allow you to make things in your shop and you're probably gonna break a few things along the way. So the TLDR version of this guy, I actually think it's really good if you're wanting to get into laser engraving. Honestly, this will be the one if folks ask me, hey, I really wanna get into engraving things. Uh, I've got some cutting boards or I'm doing some smaller projects. What would you recommend? Honestly, this is gonna be the one I recommend and we'll get into all the details why. So it comes in at 200 bucks. You can pick it up at Gearbest. There's a link down below if you want to check it out. And what I really like about this thing is just the overall workspace. This is actually actually the second version of this guy. This, it is a lot smaller, the actual workspace that you could work with. In fact, this thing can just fit right inside of it. You're gonna be working with about a four to five watt laser. They're gonna say it's 15 watts, but that's really the power going into it. Um, the actual diode laser that you're working with is much lower in wattage, meaning that it's gonna take a good amount of time to do engraves. And really, if you're gonna be cutting, you're not gonna be able to do much past paper, really thick paper, maybe really thin wood. Um, here is a chart if you wanna see all the different things that you can cut out. So first, we're gonna show you what this thing looks like coming out of the box and what the assembly is like. We'll go over some of the main features and then we will actually do some tests. So the assembly is pretty straight forward. What's nice about these is most of the elements are already put together. So you can see already the entire X gantry is already put together. You're not having to do anything crazy. And really the, the biggest part about this is you are going to assemble um, just the overall frame um, with some screws. Then you are going to drop on the feet that kind of raises this thing off of the ground. Then you're gonna put in the gantry. Really the hardest part about this thing is the timing belt, uh, which is a little bit hard, but it's not that big of a deal. And then you're just attaching the laser and the control board. In terms of materials, uh, the frame, it looks like it's extruded aluminum. Everything else is plastic. So it's not gonna be the most robust. It's not like it's an entire metal frame, but for what this is, this does a pretty good job. So the software that it comes with is called Laser Gerbil, and that is PC specific. I've run that piece of software in the past. It works fine. It's not really the easiest in terms of workspace, but it's free and it's great. What I actually like to use is Lightburn. What's great about Lightburn is you connect it not only to a PC, but you can also connect it to a Mac. So let's actually jump into that piece of software real quick and kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So we're gonna jump into Lightburn. There's a free trial for 30 days if you wanna check it out. So I've already got the device put in. You actually don't have to install any drivers on a Mac, uh, but you can see that we've got our devices in right here. So I've already pulled in the Orchard Master Engraver. And um, now what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna pull this in as a PNG, and then I am going to resize it. And so um, you can actually do the frame function to get an idea of where this thing is going to engrave at. And we're actually gonna make this a little bit smaller. And then, uh, real easy, you can play around with your cuts and your speeds at 30% um, speed and 100% power. This is for cardboard, so we can still run it pretty quick. So let's talk about the features real quick. This actually comes in three different versions and really you're just getting three different laser units. Uh, and they say that it is a seven watt, 15 watt and a 20 watt laser. But really again, that is the power going into the laser. Uh, and so your actual laser wattage, if you compare it to something like a CO2 laser, so you might see like a 40 watt K40 is a really popular one or a 50 watt laser. Really at the 20 watt version, maybe 15 watt version, you're talking more around the four and five watt range. And again, because this is a diode laser, so you can actually see the beam while it is going. So speaking of seeing the beam, talk about some of the safety stuff this has. So on the good side of things, uh, just like with the smaller version, if you actually bump this laser while it's running, it's gonna cut the beam off. When I was running it on the PC, the PC would actually go to sleep when I was doing a long engrave. And then when it saw that it was no longer receiving a signal, the actual laser stopped firing. But that really brings me to probably the biggest drawback on machines like this is the fact that there's no enclosure. So with uh, the other lasers that I've done 
on my channel, like the 50 watt laser or the full spectrum Muse. Those are full enclosures the laser is inside of. Again, this is way, way less power, but still the laser is dangerous. If you touch it, you're gonna get hurt. Um, if it bounces off of material, uh, it's gonna hit your eye. It's not good. So what I would probably recommend, and if I was gonna use this permanently in my shop, I would build an enclosure around it. They do provide some safety glasses. It's kind of the whole principle of looking into the sun. You don't really wanna do because it's gonna hurt your eyes. Same deal here. Um, you're gonna wanna have some type of lens where it's actually um, reducing the amount of light. And again, with safety, I would always highly recommend having a fire extinguisher around. I've got one of these in my shop. They're pretty cheap. You can pick them up on Amazon. Because most of the time you're probably gonna be working with something like wood or paper, you can do plastics, so like acrylic with this, but because there is no enclosure, that means there's no venting, which means that's gonna smell really, really, really bad. So you wanna do this in an open air environment. In my case, I'm in my garage, so I can open my garage door up. So in terms of the work area, you are looking at a 430 by 400 millimeter size, which is, let me check my math, 15 by 17 inches. So actually a really, really good work area. This is actually a full 12 by 12 piece of maple that I've been playing around with. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and actually test this guy out. You can see once you turn it on, it's going to auto home. It's got a limit switch over here, which is great, as well as a limit switch over here. It does not have limit switches on the other side. We're gonna be jumping into our PC to actually run this guy, and it just connects through USB. And so what I wanted you guys to see is we're gonna be engraving this little Mandalorian symbol right here. I'm gonna make it pretty small. And so you can also do a preview. And you can see it's gonna take about a minute 28 seconds. All right, and then we're gonna hit start and we're gonna get rolling with it. And safety glasses. So what I really wanted you guys to see is kind of the speed. So this is just a good test engrave, really so you guys can see the actual speed on this guy. So if we get closer, uh, you can get a good idea of how fast this guy is going back and forth. Obviously, if you're gonna do a bigger engrave, um, it's going to take some time, but this is hardwood. Again, we're running this at 100% power and it's about 30% speed. So it could actually go a good bit quicker, but depending on the material you're gonna be using, you're gonna have to lower your speed um, or up your power if you're able to, to get a nice engrave. We'll go ahead and speed this up real quick to the end so you guys can get an idea of what it looks like. All right, we've done some other engraves as well on this, but you can get an idea. Does a good job. So engraves you'll do a good bit, but you can also do cuts. And again, really you're only gonna be cutting paper or something fairly thin, but instead of doing a raster to where it's filling in um, everything within the lines, you can do a cut where it just follows a vector line. In this case, we're gonna throw some text steps so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So you can see instead of doing a raster back and forth, it is just following the lines to spell out Jimi Hendrix. You have to drop the speed down a good bit to do this. This is now running at 10% instead of 50%, but this is the kind of effect that you'll get. So in addition to doing the straight lines, you can also do a line and engrave. So it's going to do the engrave process first. And then actually right here, I actually just turned the thing off while it was running. So that's why the M isn't all the way down. So you can see that adds a little bit of a definition to it. So we won't get super deep into tests for this version. If you guys wanna see some of the things I've tested in the past, again, the first version of this guy is right up there. And we do several tests with this. The actual laser unit is literally the same as the one sitting right here, as well as the, uh, the control board and everything is pretty much the same. So the biggest difference, again, is going to be the size. But if you guys do wanna see some of the quick tests that we did do, um, I probably will use this mostly for engraving on wood, but I also engraved a little bit with cardboard. So you can see there is a Batman cover I was playing around with in an engrave. This is actually a darker version that stopped because that computer went to sleep. And again, because it went to sleep, um, it cut power to the laser. So the laser wasn't just sitting in one spot and burning a hole, which would have been really bad. So they provided some birch, looks like plywood. So uh, really easy to do some name tags, logos, that kind of stuff, if you would want to drop them on there. 
The big thing I was playing around with was this sheet of maple. And so we did quite a few uh, engraves on here. So we did this pig design, which I've seen on cutting boards a good bit. But one of the cooler things you can do is you can actually take grayscale images and put them onto different objects. This works really well with solid pieces, so nothing with the grain. So whether it's like MDF or even cardboard, you can kind of see that is a portrait of Jimi Hendrix, which was actually clear right when I did it, but then I like rubbed it. And so it kind of made it furry, which is weird. We did a larger version. And again, this was on that maple. And so you can see that uh, you get the wood grain that is coming through, but Lightburn as well as Laser Gerbil uses something called dithering, which just does a bunch of different dots to make different shades of gray. And um, you can get some pretty cool effects. I probably would have run this maybe one more time just to darken it up, but uh, it looks uh, pretty cool. And now I'm going to have Jimi Hendrix. So version two means there's a version one. So this is a lot smaller in terms of the actual engrave area. And if you wanna get more information about that one, I've done a full review on it as well. And we're gonna jump into that right now so you can compare it to version number two. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.